Just if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm going to set up so I can see everybody's comments. Here we go. We're going with a little pink today. Oh, oh I know what's wrong. Let's turn off the Wi-Fi. Oh, I'm not sure why I can't see it. Hello, hello, give me one sec. I can't see my own stream, which is weird. There we go. Morning, everybody. Um, I can't see myself, but I don't need to see myself. I just need to see All right. So I'll just be doing a lot of winches today. Are guys allowed? Of course guys are allowed to come hang out and watch me sew. Why would they not? This is not a sexist thing. This is just come hang out. Learn something. Not learn something. Chat to me. Chat to each other. Whatever you feel like doing. Just no insulting each other and you'll be fine. An alarm just came up on my phone. Whoops. All right. Actually, this is too much on my table at once. Uh, but I've cut out four wenches. So I've got two that look like this. Uh, one fancy pink one. And the mottled, multicolored, crazy one. Because why not? Honestly. Where did I get my vinyl? So these... All of these vinyls are those little rolls that you can get from Spotlight. So they're only good for like accents and wench wallets. I couldn't make like a whole bag. I can't buy this by the meter, unfortunately. Um, but these were all between five and ten dollars a roll. Uh, but you'll only get one full wench wallet out of one. You'll have some leftovers, but you can't get a full wallet. So I'm going to get two wallets out of this one, but I'm only using this on the outside and then the inside is going to be black. Um, so like this cool multicolored PC one, I only get one wallet. Uh, so basically it cost me $10 to make that wallet, but that's okay. It's fine. Um, I saw a lot of you were buying the templates for Wench Wallet. Also, thank you for everybody that did purchase this wallet. That is awesome. Uh, and I have already gone and spent the money on more supplies. <laughs> it lasted not even 24 hours, but that's okay. And I needed new bobbins. So, another cool thing. My in um, cylinder arm machine, which is just off camera here, I got my husband to shorten the table. So I'm going to start doing a lot more videos on that now because it is... When I'm sewing, my hands are now this height as opposed to when they were here because this is not a fun way to sew for me. All right, so I've got, I haven't actually picked what color hardware I'm doing for any of these. We're just kind of winging it and that's okay. I'm gonna do pink thread for everything and that's about all I've picked. Uh, so if you've got suggestions on like what color Hardware I should do with this, I am all ears. Um, hubby's gone away. Morning, Michelle. Hubby had to go and do like a bike course or something today. So he left really early uh, and he woke me up, which is not a bad thing. Just means I, I've up, showered and got everything done really early. Um, would help if I turn my machine on, I'm guessing. Gold hardware. I could do that. You only need zips and some press studs. So I'm using the 201 press studs. Uh, that's what they're called. They come in different sizes and whatever. Uh, basically they're for like leather vests. Morning! Um, so the press studs I like to use, they've got a lot of, um, like grip. So the wallet's never likely to accidentally fall open. Like, it's not a thing. 
You can use plastic snaps on the Pickle Rick wallet that I did. I used plastic snaps and there's nothing wrong with that. But I imagine over time the snaps won't be as snappy. Whereas I don't think those leather ones will ever give in. So I'm not going to be doing this in any particular order, by the way. I'm just, because I'm sewing multiples, I'm just going to sew whatever I feel like. There's no right or wrong order. You can do it however you like. Uh, but they all will have pink thread. Because that's going to be easier for me to deal with. And because these are all taking up a drawer. Um, so the dies and snaps mainly I get from eBay or other hardware suppliers if I can't find them myself. I actually bought the other type of snaps and I bought a, a die and I bought the wrong one. So that was just a big waste of money. I put it here. So I bought the dies and they all looked good except that I accidentally bought really skinny ones. Uh, so I'll be giving those away to somebody that can use them in like a skinny bottomed machine. I don't know, feels like a big waste of money, but what do you do? It is a bit of a sewing circle when we go live. I need to work out these zoom things so that we can do like sew alongs together and you can ask live questions. Um, so this is like a faux leather, this stuff. It's like faux leather vinyl. It's really funky. It's actually fluffy. I don't know if you can see it, but it's not, it's not, it's actually like fur on there, which is cool. I'd be down to do like a Zoom class. That could be kind of fun actually. You'll notice that I'm not sewing across the bottom because we're going to do that when we attach it. However, if you decide that you want to attach these with rivets, just sew the bottom. But I'm going to do it later because it's fine. Hi, Deborah. I know I've got another one of these in here somewhere. There it is. Sewing wenches sounds like a group. <laughs> kind of does. Um, so I'm trying to think of a theme for next year's patterns, like to call them all, because I've run out of this theme. There's only like, I've got enough names to finish out the year, and then I need to move on to something else. So part of me wants to do like weird animals nobody's ever heard of, because I thought that would be amusing. And then I thought maybe I could just use like really cool words. Like smattering. I, I really love the word smattering lately. So I could just call them random words. I don't know. I won't be doing the traditional names or flowers or anything like that. I like to be a bit weirder than that. And I have been putting some serious thought into what to call it. And I just, they're the two best responses I've got at the moment. Or I could do like obscure Australian animals since I am Australian. Right. Uh, use vintage sewing terms that people have long forgotten. Flippity gibbet. See, flippity gibbet is totally something I would use. For example, whippersnapper. I could use like old timey words. It'd be so cool. Where are my... I lied. I was not as prepared as I thought. I need the wench templates because I haven't drawn on them yet. It's kind of annoying. That one, that one, one of those, because they're the same. I know I had two black, oh there it is. Why not the Aussie slang? Because most Aussie slang is, um, oh, that could actually potentially work. All right, give me two secs. I just need to grab my templates because I put them away. I was trying to behave myself and put them away. And so now they're in a cupboard. So the templates come with a hole so you can hang them. So I hang them on these little cardstock hooks 
in my wardrobe on um like curtain rings that's how i store mine so mine leave in like the the coat cupboard or whatever um and this piece you won't find a template for this in the pattern it's just the measurement that you need between each of the card slots and i have asked my template guy to make a template so that it's quicker uh you also get your zipper tab and this is the one I'm looking for. So it's got all of my card slot lines. I'm doing up my live early because I'm super organized today, except for the fact that I forgot this, but I'm not me if I don't forget something. Um, so I thought I'd just come on like an hour early or an hour and a half. Because why not? So I'm just scribbling in the holes to mark it. Um, a felt tip pen is better than a ballpoint pen, in my opinion. This is a friction pen um, and it's really wet, I guess is the, the word I'm looking for. So it draws quite easily. Um, but yeah, this is super helpful with the templates. Now you can just laminate the pattern piece that I've done, but I find this easier. I love templates. I, all my patterns are gonna come in templates. I made a siren. I know, siren is huge and I absolutely love it. It's like the perfect giant beach bag. Especially if you're a larger family. Because you can literally fit everything. Where is ugh, this? Hello from Australia, Wales. I love that I could just talk to everybody around the world. We could just chat about stuff. And since I did literally this video yesterday, I probably am not going to overly explain what's going on, just random stuff that I'm doing instead. You want to make sure you punch these holes really well. You want to push all the way down because what the circle does is the circle stops the vinyl splitting when we turn it through. I'm going to make a sign for Christmas. Perfect for obvious summer. That is actually very true. I've got one. My siren is actually what I use to carry everyone's orders to the post office. I can fit like nine in or ten in there. Not the boxes. The boxes I have to carry. But all the green bags fit in my green siren because I'm a green nut. So this is the bit that takes forever, the card slots. The rest of the wallet is actually really quick. that's cool I can just watch over here we're in Florida we need beach bags so the beach bag I chose to do I've put mesh in the bottom uh, which means the sand will fall out easy and someone did point out to me that yes but sand can also get in and that is true but we don't concentrate on that bit sand will get into your bag whether it's got a hole in the bottom or not the mesh means that it will fall out and you won't take half the beach home with you for example, if you're collecting shells, the sand will fall out of the shells, but not into your bag. Because I remember as a kid, I liked to collect shells at the beach. All right, one down, three to go. Hi, Elena. Did I make this? I did make this top. So I have a video on how to make this top. I did it in a different color. Um, I've made myself three more of these since. It's got like this cool elastic bit here and then it's just floaty. It's really comfortable. Um, do not skip the step where you interface 
the facing because it just doesn't sit as nice if you skip that step. Some of you might be tempted to just go, ah, I won't bother interfacing it. Don't do it, it's a trap. Right. See, look how quick that was. I painted my whole sewing machine green. Like, I think we've made peace with the fact that I like it. All right. I'm also expecting a lot of orders this week. Oh, so for those of you that are in my Facebook group, my waterproof canvas has arrived. I'm going to be cutting it up on Friday, ready for Sunday's release. Um... There's a lot of colours. It, it was a very, very heavy package. Hi Trish. We, have, we don't find out where we're moving until August. So it's a bit of a guessing game until then. And they'll tell us what, like, what time or what date we have to be there. And then we just, we've got like a month grace period to move and whatever. So I find out in August... And that one market I'm doing this year is at the end of August. So that will be like the last major thing I do for the year. And the rest of the year will just be pattern making and sending orders. And videos. Always the videos. Um, I, have, I have started the water bottle. It's coming in two sizes. And it's having the round base, because most of you voted round base, even though it's tricky. Um, and I'm going to do a zipper pocket. I'm just going to make them really, really simple. Or, and I'm also having like a cinched top, because why not? And that will be a free pattern. I will have it for download in my Facebook group. And then those that don't have Facebook, I will have it on my website as well when I get to it. So that's hopefully after I make these wallets today, my plan is to go and finish designing it and write up the pattern and hopefully get it to the testers. I've also got a backpack coming. I've got a cool duffel. I started cutting it out. I've worked out all the mats for it. I just need to find time to do it. Uh, so I've kind of got three patterns started. Which I know I should do one at a time, but that's not how my brain operates. Alright, so I'm finished with that. My brain doesn't stop. Sometimes it wakes me up in the middle of the night and I have to literally get out of bed and write down the pattern and the measurements that are in my head. It's super frustrating, but it just means that you guys are definitely going to get the 12 patterns I promised for the year. My New Year's resolution at the start of the year was to make 12 patterns by the end of this year. I think I'm already at like 8 or 9. And I, I'm trying to do one every month and then I've slipped in a couple of extras. So technically next month was the wench that I've released early. Um, which is fine. And I might be getting, I might have to start up a second tester group. I know I discussed this in the last live, but it really is on my brain. So that I don't overwhelm my current testers. Hello everybody. Hello mother. So this is going to, you're going to just watch me do this for like the next 10 minutes. Because I've got three to do. Um, so if you do sew to sell, doing things in production is always quicker than making one at a time. So this may look like, yeah, it's going to take me ages, but it's ultimately quicker to do it this way. I promise. You've also got to remember there is 18 card slots per thing. So that's technically I'm punching 38 holes per piece of vinyl.
which is fine, but, you know, I love this stuff. I wish I could get this by the meter. That would be, like, the coolest backpack ever. Oh, I've also started, last night I started cutting out the Haley Jane backpack by KM Designs. I've picked, like, a cool rainbow turtle, and I'm going to use blue sail vinyl, and I found some, like, scale fabric in rainbow in my cupboard so that will be the lining um theoretically it will be tomorrow's video unless something comes up i also really want to get to all the clothes that i have cut out because i need a winter wardrobe have i made the holes and slits in my scan and cut i have not and there's reasons for that a scan and cut mat is only 12 inches this is bigger than that so it doesn't fit I did already have this thought about making an SVG file, but it won't fit, so I didn't bother. You could do the smaller bits, but, you know. So I did think about it. And I mean, if you could line it all up, you could probably do half at a time, but you'd still have to switch it. So, yeah, I don't know. If anybody tries it, please let me know. Um, I can probably get an SVG of just the slots and stuff. Now this, this vinyl that I bought, even though it looks really cool, it's actually a bit sticky. So you'll notice that I actually have to, once I've punched the hole, I actually have to pull it out from underneath because it gets stuck. So if you're on a domestic machine, you really want to have a Teflon foot to be using this stuff because it is a bit sticky. Just so you know. I upgraded to the newer ones with a 12 by 24 mat. I did think about it. There's nothing wrong with my scan and cut machine. And to be honest, I mainly just use it to make free stickers for you guys. Which I know is not why I should have purchased it. And it's not what I originally intended on doing. My original plan when I bought it was like forever ago. And I was going to cut out the accent pieces to the Clematis wristlet by Blue Color. Um... I didn't have a great deal of luck cutting vinyl, so I gave up and it sat on my shelf for a few months. And now I do stickers. And HTV. I don't use it to its full potential, which tells me that I should not upgrade because it's just a waste of money for me to get a more expensive one. I also don't plan on getting rid of mine. I like giving away stickers. Teflon feet are amazing. If you can't find a Teflon foot for your model machine, Teflon tape is a great alternative. So you probably only get one or two bags per piece you stick on the bottom of the foot before it wears off. But that whole roll I think was $13. I've obviously used a lot and your foot's only this big. So, you know, there's like 10 meters or something. It'll last you ages. So if you can't find a Teflon foot, Buy yourself some Teflon tape. Also, actually, while I've got the Brains Trust here, does anyone know where I can get that cool foamy grip thing for this? Because I think I want one. I've nearly finished with the holes. Thank goodness. So yeah, Teflon tape, I got that on eBay. Um, so imagine, if you're in America, I imagine Amazon has it. Because Amazon for you guys is like eBay for us. Kind of. Amazon in Australia is not like Amazon in America. You can't just, oh wow. They, that, look at that, that's all the holes. They're all stuck together. I told you it was sticky. They have a... So they do. You can get a foam, like, handle grip. It's, like, thick. 
thick foamy like a dense foam and it's shaped for the handle and you should just like shove it on and then it's soft and squishy and I want one all right where is my coffee mat Ugh. knuckles are sitting on it is the official answer eBay or Aliexpress they sell a lot of press related things it is like confetti. You are correct. Now, even though I'm only cutting little card slots, I don't like to use the little ruler. Uh, because I feel like my fingers are too close and it's also got more chance to slip. So even though I'm cutting tiny little card slots, I will use the bigger ruler. So I don't hurt myself. Pool noodle. Well, oh, that's cool. All right, so I hold this like a pen because I find I have better control and I'm less likely to cut past the card slots. I know this is probably all prep work that I should have done off camera, but this is a live. It's less of a tutorial and more of a come hang out with me while I source them. And I like to sit here and do it. I like to sit and cut card slots. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, in that case, I might go buy a pool noodle this afternoon. So the other option that I have right now is I can grab this and sit it on. The only downside to doing it this way is that the blade doesn't cut the whole way across so i'm actually going to get a bunch of smaller um rotary cutter blades i want to get like an 18 mil so a really really small one and then theoretically i will be able to get that last little bit because either way i still have to come back and do this So it has the slot so you can cut most of it and then just come along and cut the last little bit but again i'm gonna buy i need to do a birch order for more interfacing because i'm nearly out of bag foam um that's about all i'm nearly out of but i'll just buy a heap of stuff and i'm gonna buy some 18 mil rotary cutters while i'm at it because i think it's gonna be i think i will be able to cut this, this whole thing and then just punch the holes at the end, which would be amazing. And then it's all stringy. Am I the only one that shreds fingernails on the thread on the regular? I have fake nails, so I don't have that problem. I get fake nails for sewing because they're not useful in any other part of my life. They're actually a hindrance when I was horse riding. That's why I don't have a nail here. But you'll notice I went with new colored nail polish. So from a distance, you can't see that I have no nail. Because some people, it grosses them out. And I get that. So horse riding, my nails are a bit of a hindrance. But for sewing, I find they're really good in like sewing holes. So that's why I get them. Because when I don't have them, I find that I get more scared that I'm going to get my finger. Whereas if I get the nail, it's not mine. It won't hurt for the most part. Hi, Maria. No, I'm doing, I'm making four welts at once. So there's a lot of repetition today. Just doing card slots. I should start playing music in my lives. I love music. You'll notice I'm still cutting it from the back. That's because I don't want the um, thingy to slip from the front. We are making four wench wallets. I probably won't get all four finished on screen, but I promise I'll finish at least one. I do actually, so I want to take 10 of these to 
the horse show thing that I'm doing because everybody loves a wallet. I'm on a sewing break and glad to catch you live. I feel like I have company. Yeah, nice. So, I did do my video on this. Uh, the pattern is available. The templates are available. I'm going to try, and I can't promise, but I am going to try that as I release a pattern, I will have the templates ready for you because that would be cool. Also, when your blade gets blunt on these, just replace it. I didn't think that cut. Because what's going to damage you and how you're going to get hurt is from a blunt blade. Last one! Woo! I can see a comment there, but I can't read it. Have you thought turning hand press to a foot press? Yes. I would love to do it. However, doing videos for you guys, I need to be able to access it. And having it attached to a giant thing is not going to work out. So I would love to have a foot press, but for video purposes, I won't do it. I have thought about it several times. I have looked it up on Pinterest. It doesn't look that hard. Hubby could whip it up in like an hour. But I won't do it because then I can't show you how to use presses in my videos. And the whole point of my videos is to be educational. It's like my whole thing. I want to teach people. Hi, Renee. Are you making another one? I was watching you earlier this morning. I'm making another four is what I'm doing. Water pipe insulation foam. Oh, see, now you're thinking. I like it. Might go to Bunnings after this. After going to town and get more crunchy nut cornflakes for my breakfast. Probably should have done this off camera. Sorry, guys. Didn't realize four would take me quite this long. That's okay. It's done now. Feels like deja vu because I was watching it earlier today with this vinyl. This is a different vinyl. It's close. It's similar, but it's not quite the same. All right, I'm just going to throw all those bits in the box. They're all in my way. So I'm using the pink. And so I just cut full strips of this. Um, in America, your waterproof canvas is thicker than mine. Uh, for better or worse, that's just how it is. So you might want to use ribbon or Ollie fun or like thin stuff. Whatever you have that's your thin stuff. What color did you pick for the thread for all of them? I'm doing pink. Um because it matches and the pink's gonna look really cool on the black for the the pink and black zebra and this one's pink so pink will work and the rainbow could have anything if I skip the rainbow I could always put rainbow thread on like I did for the video yesterday um I don't know could go either way Uh, this is quarter inch or six mil double sided tape. You can fit the half inch just. Uh, this is easier. The smaller one. In my personal opinion. I'm just going to do one of these. I promise I won't do all four. And then we'll make it. And then we'll do it. So you get into a groove. The other reason I'm doing it like this is I get into a groove with the card slots. And you actually get quite quick at it if all you're doing is card slots. And then you can come back and make the rest later.
And the, the tape doesn't have to go all the way across. You just want like the middle two thirds to three quarters. Ta-da. Would ripstop fabric be okay? Yes. You could definitely use ripstop. You just need something thin and fabric-y that doesn't, yeah. Thin and fabric-y are pretty much your two requirements there. Oh, this is going to be super hard to see, guys. Ha! You should maybe think about that when you purchase stuff. I very clearly did not think about that. And the metallic sheen on this is going to make it really tricky to see the very tiny card slot. But whatever. It's fine. I will deal. So I'm just going to use a normal pen. And then my little... You can make one of these out of cardboard. You can just take the measurements and make one. It's just, if you're going to buy the templates, it comes with one. Hi, Giselle. Alright, so we're going to fold it over, press it down, take it off, in the bin. It's also kind of therapeutic to just sew card slots. If you like getting in that zone, it's also my... Um, Creaser to get like a good crease. It's just a good rectangle of plastic. What can I say? Here you get really thin landscape material. There you go. Lemon tree wallet pouch for a client, and I was thinking three card slits was enough after watching you this morning. Yeah, so I designed this wallet mainly because every time I looked at people when they make wallets, they're always trying to add more card slots. Or I have customers that come to me and they want 24 card slots, or they want, you know, a lot. So that's why this wallet exists. This is like, if you're into card slots, you want this wallet. Um, which is obviously not for everyone, because a lot of people have gone digital with their card storage. Um, but I like it because basically half of my wallet now holds um, like business cards. So I have to pull out my wallet to give it to them, which shows them a wallet. And I can see as I'm running out, and you've always got your wallet on you. Whereas sometimes I was forgetting my little card storage container. Or I was forgetting to fill it up or whatever. So that's what I use all my extra card slots for, is business cards. So it does get used. Oops, missed. So again, with this piece, this piece of tape that I put on this end, you don't need to go the full length. It's excessive and unnecessary. And a waste of double-sided tape, because we're already using a crap ton on this. So ripstop, ripstop fabric is just a really thin polyester fabric, and it's got like little squares built into it. And the idea is, is that it won't rip past the squares because they're like a reinforced bit. It does if you pull hard enough. Um, they also use it to make kites. That's what ripstops made. Like that's what people make ripstops into. Uh, because it's light but strong, etc., etc. Um, so Spotlight sells it in like four or five colors. I don't know where it sells it in America. Sorry. I already feel like I'm in the zone with this. I think some of the um, umbrellas in the world are also made from ripstop. Which is kind of cool. This stuff they make umbrellas out of. You want to make sure that crease is really good. Oh, come on, pen. 
Karen. Don't hate me now. Keep going with my zone. Yes, well, I've got to do a lot of these. 36, 36, 60, 70. 72 card slots today. There you go. Tensor made from Ripstop. on this by the way if you've got the time you can pull the thread through the back and then tie them off I do not have that kind of time in my life um, and I don't necessarily hate the true back stitches that you see um, I might consider doing it if I was using like an expensive leather to make this I might pull all the stitches through um, but yeah no I'm quite happy to just back stitch and be done I have not found waterproof canvas. Several colors of ripstop. So PUL is more plastic. Because uh, Spotlight sells that too. Uh, and for those that don't know, I used to work at Spotlight up until we moved here, pretty much. So the reason I reference Spotlight is a lot is because I know it has it because I worked there. And I was in the fabric section. I was borderline that little miss know-it-all that knew all the fabrics, like a crazy person. I also used to spend most of my paycheck there because I like fabric. Uh, so it's worked out probably better that I don't work there now because I'm actually getting my stash down. Is Spotlight a sewing store? It is. So I imagine it's very similar to your Joann's. Uh, but they never do as good specials. You guys get like a lot of like 70% off vouchers. We don't get them. You're lucky to get a 40% off. Um, it's the biggest fabric store and chain store in Australia. Because it's kind of all over. The next closest one is Lincraft. Which, by the way, is owned by Sullivan's, if you didn't know. Uh, but they don't do a, they don't do as good a range of fabrics. They also sell like pillows and home decor and furnishings and curtains and stuff. I mainly just shop there for the fabric. They have gotten better with their vinyls that they have in store. Um, they've started getting a lot more kind of funky printed stuff. But I found the last two releases that they've brought in is really thin. I've bought a little bit to make um, these wallets, but I'm most likely going to interface it to make it thicker. See, 60% off. That's not a thing in Australian's spotlight. 60% off never happens except on curtains. It is very dangerous working in a fabric store because I want everything. And I know from experience with Spotlight that if you see something and you don't buy it and you come back three days later, it's probably then gone and out of stock for the next six months, which made me impulse buy a lot more than I probably should have in like very high quantities. But, whatever. It's fine. Whoops. Oh yeah, and they have wool and yarn and crafty stuff and paints and everything. They have a lot of stuff. So it's really good as a one-stop craft shop. Um, and they have been getting a lot better with their licensed fabrics that they got in. So they did get in Harry Potter, which I wasn't expecting. They've recently got in like Simpsons and Rick and Morty, which is why I had the Pickle Rick fabric. Alright, so I'm going to chop this into my card slot. Uh, uh, yeah, my zipper pockets. So 
I will get three pieces out of this. So one of them will be the back of the slip pocket. And then I have to stand up so I can cut straight. I even got out of my fluffy pants today. I'm in jeans. Look at me go. Morning, Tori. I love spotty. Great to waste an hour. It really is. Although usually when I go, I've got my child. So it's, it's not as wasting. He gets bored. The first thing I usually do when we go to Spotlight is go buy him a balloon um, with helium because that will entertain him. And then I ask his opinion to help me pick stuff because that keeps him engaged. But I tend to go there a lot less. So I went there to use my 40% voucher and all I bought was the weatherproof Spotlight canvas which is thicker and different to my stuff. Uh, and it frays a lot more, but I'm interfacing the bits that I'm using. All right, we're to the other side. Look at me go. Actually, I can show you what I just made with this stuff. So, this is the Siren Beach bag that I just made out of the weatherproof canvas from Spotlight. So, this is like UV resistant and stuff. And these are the horses' names. So, they're actually going to use them as like show bags to put all their boots and like horsey stuff in. And I've used rope that I attempted to splice. It's not brilliant, but it works. So instead of having like a big chunky knot, I've kind of like spliced it in. There's still a little bit of a bump because it was my first go and I'm not great at it. But then you hide that in the side and it's fine. I have just got a cricket maker from Spotlight. That's cool. Cricket's really stepped up its game lately. So Cricket, Spotlight, Scan and Cut, it's all much of a muchness. I hear that Cricket's got a better interface to use that's like people friendly. Uh, but it's all like online, which would annoy me a little bit. I like to just sit at my computer. Mine's so old school it doesn't even have Wi-Fi. I have to plug a USB in, but it's fine. It works. Hi, Melissa. I am making a wench wallet in pink because it's fabulous. So I do plan on taking photos and putting these on the website. Part of me hopes they sell because yay, and then part of me hopes I'll still have them to take them to the show because I'd like to actually have stock for the show. My kids love fabric stores and he picks all the fabric. That's cool. Oh, I've just ordered a whole bunch more like grommets and stuff for the whippersnappers since we're all doing the swapsy. And I call it swapsy because I'm childish and I'm pretty okay with that. <laughs> it's who I am as a human. If you haven't caught on to that by now, you never will. Because I noticed I'm getting low on grommets. I'm not out of all of them. Some of them I ordered ages ago when I got down low. Uh, and then I just went and topped everything up this morning. And then yesterday somebody bought all 10 of my purple conchos. So I can't help that. I went from 10 to 0 in 5 minutes. So I have ordered more of the purple. So the conchos are... The 201 snaps that I'm going to use on this, the conchos are those, but then the top gets screwed on and it has this really cool big decorative thing. Unfortunately, they only come in silver. I haven't found them in other colors. Uh, that hasn't, I am still going to look when I have a spare five minutes, but that's probably not this week. I want to design a bunch of patterns. I need to get the water bottles done. Oops. Um, so the water bottle pattern will be after this live. 
and it sit, crank some music, design it, stitch out both sizes, take photos, and hopefully get it to the testers by the end of the day. That is my mission today. Um, once it's at the testers, I can then go start the next pattern. I also want to make 20 to take to the show, so I'm going to do 10 large and 10 small. Because I personally only use a pretty small drink bottle. But I know a lot of people have those really big ones, which is why I've decided the pattern will come in two sizes. Because I wouldn't want a giant oversized one, it's going to flop around. And obviously the small ones won't fit people with that have large drink bottles. So I just decided to do two sizes because it's easier. All the mats is done and I've cut out the pieces. I just need to sew it and make sure it all works out well and then take photos. And the large and the small will be made in the same way. They are just different sizes. Do you sew? I do sew between each card slot. You could actually not sew and glue it. I was in a shop yesterday and they sold wallets and I just wanted to have a look. And they do their card slots like this, but instead of sewing, they've just put glue and they're just gluing this stuff to the inside so that you don't have the stitches on the outside. Uh, but I like sewing, so I'm sewing them together. But you could do that. It was on like a leather wallet. I think it was made in, I don't know where it was made. I don't remember, China or India or something. So what they've done is they cut the card slots as thick as the, the circle. So they'd punch a hole and then cut top and bottom to have an actual hole there. And then they had just glued the backing on because I went and checked because I'm that person. I'm that person that goes into shops to look at stuff to then go home and make it. And then sometimes I feel guilty I'm taking photos. So I pretend like I'm taking options of photos for my husband to pick from so he can buy me one. Not going to lie, I've told that to, like, a lady before. And I just took the photo so to see if I could, like, recreate it. Everyone pulls inspiration from somewhere. Oh, I also can't promise that you won't hear random banging. I'm pretty sure they're still doing the, um, the tank testing. I can see that a lot of people are on Facebook. I can't check it, sorry guys. Otherwise I can't see your comments. It's like flashing at me. Someone's messaged me and I have like eight notifications. So if you're trying to join my Facebook group, either one of my admins will do it while I'm here or I'll get to it when I get off. I've bought a few wallets just to take them apart. It is a good way to learn to make patterns, if that's what you're into. I try to make my patterns as simple as possible so that beginners can make them. That's mainly what I'm doing over here. Uh, I'm just going to warn you that my duffel bag I'm doing is going to have binding. I saw a shape on an ad because I talk about bags so much Facebook sends me a lot of bag ads as if I'm gonna buy it which obviously I'm not but I saw a really cool shaped duffel it was all made of like leather and hand stitch and whatever but I'm I'm gonna hack it and change it a little bit and make that nearly done dropping stuff on the floor. It's not even that I'm clumsy. I'm just careless. I just chuck stuff. Last one on this side.
All right. I'm going to be doing a uh, workshop on this wallet too, I've decided. I'm holding it at the... Where's my scissors gone? I'm holding it at the fabric shop in town. Um, and that way it will give you a chance to buy more fabric because I'm an enabler. Cool. Look at that. How cool. It's like, it's like this really cool like multicolored stuff going on in the pink. I really like this. I mean, it's, if if you have issues seeing, this is probably not the best fabric to use, but it does look cool. Do you have a favorite pattern? Yeah, whippersnapper. I love whippersnapper. It's quick. I can make it start to finish in an hour. I wear mine every single time I go to the horses. I wear mine. Sometimes, like if I'm taking the dog for a walk, I'll wear my whippersnapper. I like it. That's my favorite bag. Um... But I do like other bags from other designers. So I love Celine, the Celine Tote by Swoon. I love, I love the little um, Bender 2.0 by KM Designs. I love that to give us like gifts to little boys or men. I do like that. It's quick. You can, you can choose to sew or not sew a lot of this. This is one in the bag, by the way. It doesn't look like it, but it is. Um, so I don't have to top stitch most of this. So if you're not doing the decorative top stitching, this whole thing comes together in like 10 minutes. And I like that. It's a quick, good gift to give someone that you don't know what to give them. Um, what else do I like? I love the Colette bag by Kaya Papaya. I thought that was ingenious. I love Tribbiani Traveler. I thought that was an ingenious design on how to get the shape. Uh, and I, I like making it. The big one I personally think is way too big. I could almost fit in it. It was huge. Um, I've only ever made one. I made a Simpsons one for a lady. Uh, but I do love that pattern. I like how easy it is. Uh, from Bent Needle Designs, they did one that looks like a briefcase. And it's got like sharp corners. It was very clever the way she designed that. I thought it was ingenious. Um, and then all the little accents so you can make it look like a briefcase. I do love that pattern too. Um, I'm over NCW. It's a great pattern, so I'm not ragging on it in any way, shape, or form. I personally am sick of making it, so I don't offer it anymore. I make strumpets instead for customers. I've just, I've made it to death. It was one of the first patterns I learned to do, and so now I'm just over it. It is a good pattern though. I know a lot of people find it a little bit tricky. I just, I'm bored with it. What else do I like? I like the Bend and Snap from Lynn's Handmade. There's like one pattern from every designer that I really, really love. I'm trying to think what else I like. What else have I got going on in my brain? The bag I made recently, the Goddess of the Sea bag with those really cool side zipper pockets, I thought that was ingenious. I really like that bag. That ended up going to a lady in America. I woke up the next morning after I'd made it and it was sold to America. I thought that was really cool. I like the dry rung hack you did for the whippersnapper. Yeah, so you can... The fur, if you ever want to be a designer, now keep in mind there's a lot of background work that you don't see. You just see a pattern, you're like, ooh. If you want to be a designer, the first step is to start altering patterns that already exist. That, like step one, change the style of a pocket on the front of a bag or, you know, add a slip pocket. Or once you start doing that, if you're anything like me, you kind of get caught up in the moment. You go crazy and start designing stuff. Um, but yeah, you have to be good at maths is my personal experience. If you're not good at maths, it's going to take you a lot longer to make a pattern. Obviously, if you're bad at maths, you can still make a pattern. Um, but digitally drawing it and making it all work, you need to be good at maths, in my opinion. Um, whippersnapper you can definitely make without grommets. You don't have to go and buy a cam press to make it. I did a hack on my own pattern where I used D-rings instead. I just like grommets. I think they look fancy. It's literally my thing. 
I love Strumpet. I think I never thought I would design a wallet, right? Little little history. I never thought that I my brain would come up with anything even remotely cool to be a wallet. So I had mentally resigned myself to only making bags and not even gonna try wallets. Uh, three months later, I've made two. It's because I randomly get inspired by stuff. I did see there was a there's a photo going around all the fabric uh, all the pattern groups that's similar to this. I think it's made in China. Um, and it was making the rounds and I saw it and I'm like, oh my God, my brain had an idea on how to do it easily, which is why this pattern exists. Cause everyone was going around saying, has anyone seen a pattern similar or the same? Now I can't ever do them exactly the same as a store bought one. Cause they have, they have cooler stuff than me, but anyone can make this. You just need any kind of snap. So if. Okay, if you are in my Facebook group, there is a link to the Swapsy. Mum, if you're paying attention and still here, because I haven't seen if you've left or not, if you're still here, can you please get the link to the Swapsy and put it in here for all those that don't have Facebook so they can join too? I make my patterns in Inkscape, which is like a cheap... Oh, it's a free knockoff -y kind of version of Photoshop with a much less options. I never learnt Photoshop. I had it on my computer once. I opened it. There's like a million things and I went too hard. Inkscape's got a lot less, which I like. It's not as intimidating. Um, but it probably does take longer to make paces in Inkscape than in Photoshop. It also depends on your digital skill level. I am novice at best i'm terrible it takes me anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour to design one pattern piece digitally making sure that everything's the right size and it's got the right curves and it's a struggle for me i'm not gonna lie the piece on the top of vixen you know that accent piece took me an hour just to draw that one piece uh it's hard but i do it because it's my passion is that all of it so if you struggle to write out steps what do i do when i'm making a pattern i make one and i'm like cool at work and then i'll make a second one and every time i literally do anything i take a photo so not all photos make it to the pattern because you don't need 400 photos but every step that I do, I take a photo so that it's already, it's in chronological order in my phone. So when I'm writing it, I can just go back through the pictures and be like, okay, now put the tape on. Okay, now sew that to that. Now sew that to that. And so then you can take them and condense them down to the ones you don't need. Or if you're really good at digital stuff, which I am not, you could do line drawings of all the steps. That is my goal to get there one day, but it's not going to be this year. Thank you. I do have Inkscape. Yeah, cool. If you're good at Photoshop, I hear that Photoshop is better for doing it. Not going to lie. If you can do it, that's what you should use. But I don't have it. I'm not buying it. And I'm not spending six months learning it when I have worked at Inkscape enough. All right. We are up to press stabs. So what do we say? Goal. Gold snap tabs. I'm also going to need some zippers. Yes. Right. This is my personal stash bag. Uh, that's a lie. These just come in and the current stock levels are okay, so I haven't bothered to bag it up. That's actually what's going on here, but that's fine. You guys always get first dibs on stock. So I'm actually working my way through all the stuff left in here. And then I'm just going to take from stock instead of having this, uh, except for like rivets and bag feet that comes in bags of 10. Anything that comes in bags of ones and twos, I'm actually going to stop hoarding here and leave in stock for you guys. And then I'll just take it out as I need it. 
Uh, which video is the one for the whippersnapper hack? Uh, I think I called it whippersnapper hack. I really, I think that's what I called it. If you go into my YouTube and type whippersnapper, you should get like three or four videos. I've done a lot of videos on it. While I'm at it, I'm also going to put this on. Since I have to cut a hole. Um, so you can use D-rings instead of grommets. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of my patterns have grommets in them because I did convince a lot of you that you need grommets in your life. So I don't want to just make one pattern and so you've bought all, you know, you've bought a cam press and all the dies for only one pattern. I feel like that's wasteful. Uh, but there are alternatives to using grommets. So in the Siren Beach bag, I actually take off uh, that extra little part where the cord goes in and I've put grommets on one and it was really cute. Um, you can also not use them on Gypsy. You can add the slip pocket like that's on the siren. I just like you all to have options. Now when I store these, I separate bits because searching through this container is annoying. So I need two sets. And then I can, and I will seal the bag up so I don't spill them because we all know that I drop everything. All right, so when you install this, you want to make sure there's a little bit of extra fabric so that you can grab it because that's how you're going to open it. On, and then I need that one. And that's for that side. So to make sure that I always remember, I push the ends in because the the idea of the dies is it will pick up the top half. And then I can just pop it in, push it down, Bob's your uncle. I also put a one inch square of stabilizer on the back of these ones. So that it won't fall off or go anywhere or anything. Oh wait, no, what am I doing? I'm putting two of those on. We're fine. But yeah, so that I will do another whippersnapper video when we get close. Well, when once the cutoff has happened and everyone gets assigned their person. I will do another video because why not? For the whippersnapper, you have to call it I hacked my own pattern. There you go. It's called I hacked my own pattern. That's back when I only had one pattern. <laughs> my, 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 how things have changed. Now I've got heaps. Basically, the, also, the way I price my patterns, if I have to draw pattern pieces, it's eight bucks uh, because it takes me a really long time. If it's just measurements, so like the, the Seams Legit Knit Kit, which is the knitting needle bag, it's all just measurements, so it's only $4. Same with the Pellucid pouch. It's all just a bunch of measurements, so you kind of have to draw out your own. So I don't, I don't charge as much for those ones. It's when I have to start drawing everything because... It takes a while. It really does. All right, so you always want to check and make sure that this works. Gold was a good choice, by the way. Hi, Tina. Do you know when I was a kid I wanted to live in Texas because you guys can legally have pet tigers and I really like Jasmine from Aladdin. <laughs> I don't know if that's still legal now, but back when I was then, you could have pet tigers, and that's why I wanted to live in Texas. And yes, I'm aware that's a little bit insane. I'm just okay with it. All right, I'm searching through my box trying to find the slip pocket piece in this color. 
There it is. I might do, so with this one, because I've got two of them, I might do one with silver hardware and one with rose gold, maybe? I don't know. I'll do them both slightly different so that they're not just two of the exact same. I love Gypsy. That came to me when I was driving home from Shepparton, that pattern. So I wasn't planning, like it wasn't like a thing that I'm like, oh, I'm going to get to it. I thought about it on the way home and I'm like, I'm going to go home and do that and made the whole pattern. Like I skipped what I was doing to do it. That is the wrong size. What am I doing? I know what I've done. That's cool. So I need to cut a piece for here. I cut the wrong size. Gypsy actually wasn't a very popular pattern. A lot of you guys weren't into it at all, uh, which is totally fine. I get it. It's not for everyone. It's like a funky shape. Uh, in my head, I was going to design like a really cool boho one, which I haven't done yet. And I was going to have like cool hanging stuff and lace and everything. I will do it one day because it is in my brain to do. Everything's just a time factor unfortunately. And there's only so many hours in a day I designate to sewing things before I have to go and clean. Ah, oh, there we go. Trollop is coming. So I've got Hag, Vamp, Jezebel, Tentress, Hussy, Trollop and Harridan left as far as bag names are concerned. Uh, so that should get me to the end of the year before I have to think of a new theme. Which is fine. One theme a year is sounds fun, to be honest. I do like the idea of old-timey words. I also do like the idea of Aussie slang. They are very cool ideas. So we'll see what I end up picking. That's a next year problem. Uh, so I will be moving in most likely December. So I will I will leave my website up. And I will have a banner saying it will not be posted until whenever because they pack up my stuff and move it and they take it for two weeks. But if you guys want to order it, I will leave it so you can order and then you can order patterns and stuff as well. Um, it's just that shipping won't happen until I've literally got it again. And then give me one day to set everything up. I set up this whole house and unbox pretty much everything, I think, in a day and a half. We don't have a lot of stuff. I'm not a minimalist, but I don't have like a lot of knickknacks. And the people that move will unpack your kitchen for you. So I don't have to do that bit. Towels are easy enough. Um, clothing usually takes the longest because they set up the beds and everything. So it doesn't take me personally all that long to set up because they do a lot of it. They will unpack. They won't unpack personal things like clothes. But they'll unpack kitchen and I think they do linen cupboard and they'll put the furniture where you want and all that stuff. So it won't take me long to set up. It'll probably take me the longest to put all the hardware back in those containers because there's a lot of hardware. There's 116 different tubs. I have 116 different products and that's not including zipper tape all the rivet magnets, all the coloured zipper heads. I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I'm not finished. I'm going to buy zip ends. That's coming. Oh, they get paid to help. They don't just do it out of the kindness of their heart. It's part of the moving deal. So they will come and pack up and then set up at the other end. It's obviously different people, but that's fine. And I'm not one of those people that really care where my kitchen stuff is. I'm just like, pick a cupboard, any cupboard. So yeah, I'll be moving at the end of the year. Uh, as of, after this market, I will only be sewing videos. Um, and... Maybe the occasional custom order that I might get for Christmas, but I doubt it. And I will just be designing patterns for the second or the, the last quarter of the year. 
I guess. Slip pocket. Oh, you know what I just did? That's okay. I can fix that. I forgot to put this bit on because I'm chatting. So I'm going to rivet it on. So I need to sew across the bottom. It's fine. You can fix almost any problems. I make a lot of mistakes. They can be fixed, so don't stress about them. I'm sitting on. I don't let things stress me. Everything can be fixed, right? I could unpick that. I could maneuver it so I could sew it. Or I can just put rivets, and rivets is the quickest option. So guess what we're doing? And the rivets will look nice. So if I if you weren't watching this video, you wouldn't know that I accidentally forgot to sew it on. You would just think that I wanted to have the rivet accent. People don't know if you don't tell them. Especially people that don't sew. If you don't tell them there's a mistake, they won't see it. They're not hunting for it. They're not out for you. I make heaps of mistakes, people. Heaps. I sent the wrong initial measurements to my pattern guy for the templates for this. Mistakes happen. There's no point in getting upset about it. You just fix it. You can fix everything if you try hard enough. Everybody makes mistakes, and anyone that says they doesn't is lying. I don't know why I just punched that without putting this on, but anyway. No, you don't tell people. Nobody's judging you. You judge yourself harsher than anybody will. And I'm just not here to be stressed. Stress is overrated. I don't like to be stressed, so I try not to bring myself any. If I make a mistake, I don't sit here and go, oh, it's a, it's a mistake. I just go, what's the quickest way to fix this? And the answer is doing what I'm doing. So, how I'm going to do this, since I didn't do a video on it, we can, we can have an educational moment. I am going to clip this with two clips where it needs to sit. There and there. So the two clips means it won't shift around. Then I'm going to hang this off the edge, because that's the point of the shape of it. And then I'm just going to... Make sure that I'm not doing the back. I'm just going to put two rivets in. Problem solved. Decorative, glorious, easy fix. Voila. Problem solved. Crisis averted and all that jazz. Hello. Like, I'm always busy, like, always busy. And sometimes if I don't get something done, I'm like, oh, well, do it tomorrow. Not the end, nothing is the end of the world. Like, sometimes I don't get to the post office. But you know what? That's okay. On my website, it says it will take me three to five days to post it. Sometimes I'm just really onto it. And some days, you know, it's pouring rain and I don't want to go outside. Uh, I don't officially know where we're moving to, but I'm pretty sure it's Brisbane. 
And then I'll do workshops up there. Although, I don't actually think you guys want workshops because I still haven't sold out of the floozy one, which surprised me a little bit. I thought that would have sold out straight away, but apparently you guys are quite just happy with videos, which is fine. I don't mind. There'll just be more room for the people that do come. And then they get all the cool stuff. All right. So, rivets. Ta-da! Nailed it! I'm going to do this one first. Now, this doesn't have a direction, so it doesn't matter. Cobra, Brisbane, have it. What? I don't, I don't know what that said. Hi, Pauline. I'm so excited for the workshop. The bags of stuff, I just, I get carried away. I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I get carried away. So the swag bags are going to have so much stuff in them. Also, don't for, if you are coming to the workshop, please email me the form that you need to fill out. Uh, when you purchase it, there was a digital download. So you need to download that form and fill it out and send it back to me so I can make sure you get the exact color of everything that you want. Because uh, you can have any color vinyl. And I will just order it in. And I'm going to do a, a vinyl order soon, actually. What am I doing? Gold. Is that too pale? I think that'll look, look cool. That's the gold zipper tape. That's what I'm thinking. That'll do. Come home to North Queensland. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, I don't have any control over where we move. We can put in our top three preferences. So how it works. Hubby puts in his top three preferences, and then they interview him and ask him why he wants those top three preferences. And why does he want to go where he wants to go? And then they will either ignore him and send him wherever they need him most, or they might let us go. It's kind of how that works. So some people never get their preference. It's just how it is. But they did tell him that they want to send him to Brisbane, which is why I'm assuming that's where I'm going. They've pulled him aside and said, we want to send you there. So that's why my assumption is I'm going to Brisbane. Hi, Barbara. That's all right. I'm, I don't know how long I'm going to be on this line. I've nearly finished this one, but I'm also chatting. So as you can tell, it's taking longer than yesterday's video of the same thing. Oh, I also got one of my fabric orders, but I have decided I peeked in it. But then I have decided not to officially open it. And I'm going to do when all my other, because I've just went and bought all of that stuff. I got a little bit carried away with, I don't know, ordering fabric. That one day I gave in off my fabric diet, I bought a lot of stuff. So I'm going to wait till it's all here. And then I'm going to do like a mail opening so that you guys can see all the cool stuff I got in. And then all of that stuff will be used in videos after that. Ah, in the US, we pick our top three and keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, that's how that's how it works here too. Um, but sometimes you might not even get your top three. Like if you were desperately needed somewhere, that's where you'll go. Uh, but I think, I think, I don't actually know what the third one is, but our top two are Brisbane and Townsville because it's warm and I like warm. I keep having acid. My house is currently set to 24 degrees, which is why I'm not in a jumper. I like to be warmer while I'm doing videos, so I'm not sitting here freezing. We lucked out. We got our first pick. We picked here as our first pick and we got it. Um, 
And I'm pretty sure we're going to get our next first pick. I don't know if we run out of luck like that. My asthma's really not coping with being down here, though. I am just constantly sick. So basically for the whole of winter, I probably won't do any horse riding because the cold air and exercise makes me sick, which is a bit of a bummer. I'll go out and see the horse. I won't just ignore him, but I probably won't ride unless there's like a really warm day with no wind and sunshine. It's not going to happen. Are you able to get custom fabrics from the U.S.? to sell on your site I'm I'm in two minds about doing fabric right part of me thinks it would be a really cool idea and then on that subject I really kind of want to do subscription boxes next year where the pattern that comes out each month you subscribe to and you'll get a box with all the stuff to make it my issue with this plan is that not everybody likes what I like uh, not everybody likes what everybody else likes and so the, the fabric options are going to be tricky. On top of that, it will be, I could get two different types of fabrics. So I could have one that's always going to be a floral box and then one that's always going to be trippy in the stuff I like. The next problem with that is, though, that A, what if I don't sell out and I'm stuck with mountains of fabric in my house? And B, I don't really know where to source all this stuff. So I'm, I'm thinking on it. I really want to do subscription boxes. So you will get a pattern a month before I release it. And that will be the subscription box because I thought that would be really cool. <coughs> but that's a lot of logistical work and I don't quite know what I'm doing. So anyone that subscribes to the subscription box would get the pattern earlier. Uh, and if you're in the States, maybe I could do a thing where you pay like a yearly subscription and get all my patterns. I don't know. I've been thinking about this because that would be fun. But I don't know. I don't know. Do subscription boxes everything but the fabric? Yeah, but and vinyl? Because wouldn't you want the vinyl? Because... See, and then it snowballs. <laughs> do I just do subscription boxes with just hardware and a pattern? Or do I have the vinyl in there? But then you'll want to pick your vinyl colour. You know, like, it snowballs. Or each month we could do a different colour. I don't know. I've got too many ideas and not enough of a plan. That is my problem. Make sure that you're sewing these in opposite directions, by the way. And I'm basting it down because it's easier than flipping it. That's who I am as a person. The lazy way. Yeah, see? Decisions. It is a real problem because I also, when I move, so I'm not doing it this year because I don't have the space, but when I move, I'm going to create another section for hardware. And I, every single one of my patterns, I'm going to have a pre-made kit. So it, it will come with the hardware. And like for the siren, for example, you'll also get the vinyl base in the siren kit. So you will get the two zippers, the base. And then for harlot, you will get all of the, you know, rivets and stuff. For whippersnappers, you'll get the press stud. Actually, I'll have an option for press stud or magnetic snap, and then you'll get the grommets. Like, so I will have kits next year. That is definitely a hundred percent happening. I just, I don't, I don't currently have the space. I need to build another um, hardware nook because that one's nearly full. And there's only so much space in everything. Hardware pattern and interfacing. I could definitely do that. And the, the boxes will be green. I will go and get green boxes and I'll find some way that can print my logo on the top. <laughs> so I feel like you guys at least know when it's my stuff because it shows up. 
into the center, into the center. You could pick a set of fabrics and colors to go with a new pattern, then make a collage and show the colors and the theme for the new theme. Oops. Oh, get out of my way. I'm trying to read the comments and I keep getting notifications of emails. Stop it. Then people could decide if they like the overall theme and colors before they order. Yes, but then there would only be limited amounts because if it's a subscription, you'd order a month before. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So many options. I just, I don't, I don't know if anybody in Australia does subscription boxes. I personally haven't seen them floating around and I just thought they'd be really fun. That's just my thought on the matter. And so, you know, one month it'd be rainbow hardware and then it'd be rose gold and then it'd be, you know, this, that and the other. It would just be fun. And you'd get one extra rivet because you always lose one. Or drop them like me. Or put them in the wrong way. So you'd always get like that one extra rivet just in case. And it would give you a chance to try out new hardware and new colours, I guess. I could post the theme the day I order the bolt of fabric, I guess. And then after the subscription is over, I could just sell the rest of the fabric. But then we're snowballing again to I need to have places to store fabric. It's a never-ending cycle. I can't win. I just need to buy a house and have a big designated space for everything. Was that from me? Did I not send you a post? Did I send you nine, nine posts and ten caps? I have to, I sit and manually count them because when I buy a big pack of them, there's always dodgy ones. So I, I sit there and manually go through all my hardware. It doesn't come the way it comes to you. It comes in a big box and there's always something missing, something extra, or something the wrong size, literally in every single order that I do. Uh, so I sit there and make sure that everything is correct because I'm, that's just who I am. Um, like the other day I ordered 25 mil strap adjusters and two or three of them were 32 mil. And I, that's not what I ordered at all. So I, I think I'm pretty onto it. I have them all spread out and I count in tens and bag them up and then I pull the other half and do tens again. Um, it's a long process, guys. But if I'm if I've ever ever sent you something that's short, please let me know because I promise it's not my intention. I am not here to shortchange or rip off anybody. And obviously, we're all human. I do make mistakes. I've already done one today. So if I accidentally don't send you something, please let me know because I will happily rectify my problem. Nobody's perfect, but I strive there anyway. Right. Looks fabulous with gold. Whoever suggested gold, you are onto it. Do pre-orders. Here's the thing with pre-orders. What if it doesn't show up? What if they send it to me and it's of inferior quality or dodgy? This is why I don't do pre-orders. Like, I could pre-order the waterproof canvas, but there's a paranoia there. Like, what if, like, they sent me, back when I first started this, my second ever order of waterproof canvas in that lilac color, which they discontinued, they sent me a whole roll, and the whole roll was faulty. So if you've pre-ordered that, and it's faulty, then I have to worry about refunds and stuff, and I have to contact them, and if they've discontinued it, then I'm definitely screwed. 
or you'd have to wait twice as long and I don't like people waiting. So I did, I did briefly think about doing pre-orders for the waterproof canvas, but I would prefer to just have it and sell out and get more because I let people know everything is released at 4 p.m. on a Sunday. So if you want stuff and it's out of whatever, shop at 4 p.m. on a Sunday on my store and everything that I have in stock will be on there. That's, that's why I've made it a set time every week forever. Um, so that you won't miss out because you know if you want it, be there at 4 p.m. So this for, this Sunday, I am going to have waterproof canvas in purple, black, I think that's grey, light blue, dark blue, charcoal, all the four bubble prints, and that's all I can see from here. So if you're wanting waterproof canvas, this Sunday at 4 p.m., it will all be up and ready. And the reason it comes pre-cut is A, so I can get the orders out quickly, and B, because sometimes they don't send me what I actually order and we're always short, which really annoys them. Anyway, I'll stop ranting about that now. <laughs> Promise. Hello, so this is a vinyl from Spotlight. It comes on a roll that's 17 centimeters wide. I don't know where they pulled that number from. It's like six and three quarter inches. Weirdest number ever in both metric and imperial. So I don't know, but that's how wide they come. And it's like a roll that's pre-cut and that's what I'm using. So you'll get one wallet out of a roll and then you'll have a little bit extra. So if I, I could use it on strumpet on that accent, but it wouldn't work for the back because it's not wide enough. And that's what annoys me about those. Um, it is roll leftovers, but 17 centimeters, they're all that size. Like it's a weird size to be. Anyway, it's fine. I still bought some, I'm still gonna use them. I'm also trying to get through all my current fabrics so that all my videos will be from stuff that you guys can get so I don't keep teasing you with discontinued fabric. So I am, that's another reason I'm trying to get through all my fabrics at the moment is because I'd like to be like, this is where I got it from this week, go get some, rather than going, ha ha, I got this ages ago, you can't have it. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not one of those people that care if you make the exact bag in the exact same fabrics as me. I'm not worried. I like it. I've inspired you to do some sewing. Make yourself happy. Like, go ahead. I know some people get weird if you if you do the same colours as them. That's not who I am. You want to go and make this with gold hardware? Go right ahead. I encourage you to do it. These colours are fun. Ooh, base of the gypsy and the rainbow. That would look cool. That would be very cool. Wait. Wrong side. So, I like to leave open the side that has the slip pocket. Because that's the hardest bit to turn through. So I like to be able to um turn it through first. So we're going to do this side first. The green version of this is very cool. So I have this sparkliness, metallic-y, whatever we're calling this, iridescentness, I guess. I also got it in green because <laughs> I like green. I also need to hurry up and design a bigger handbag. I'm not bored of floozy. I like my floozy, but it's just, it's not big enough for me. I'm a chuck everything in my handbag person. And this bag is I don't have to carry everybody's crap person bag. But I'm really loving that Hubby now carries his own wallet around and I don't have to chuck it in my bag. I do like that. And then Jesse can't shove like every toy under the sun into my bag. 
but I also can't pop down the street and if I grab four or five things, it now doesn't fit in my bag. I have to remember to take a bag or carry it. So I need to design another bag on top of, you know, the drink bottle holder and the duffel bag and the backpack and everything else that's in my brain. I'll get there. Something will inspire me and something will jump the queue because that's always how it works. I do like floozy if I'm just popping down the street. I love taking it to the post office because all the stuff is in the siren. Um, I do like the bag. I just... I also want a bigger one. <laughs> and then I'll make that one to have a matching wench or strumpet. I like strumpet. I don't necessarily need this many card slots. Oh wait, what am I doing? What? Are, oh no. Oh, now I have to unpick stuff and I don't want to. Oh, that's right. I don't have to. Ha <laughs> ha. I forgot to top stitch because I'm chatting. I don't have to unpick anything there, so we're fine. I like the top stitching, it's pretty. I know, I love barrel bags. I, I like the Blanche by Swoon, but I don't like it. It's got drop-in lining. You've got to readjust. You've got to change measurements. Um, so I'd like to do something similar, but a slightly different shape. So that is actually, I've got a picture saved or something that's as inspiration to start from. I will get there. I love barrel bags. It's definitely coming. I've also got um, the, the completely round barrel bag by Huffs and Cuffs. I do need to do that video. I got a lot of videos I gotta do. Um, there's a new traveler bag that a lady just released. I can't remember her name, like the, the pattern name. I don't know, but I'm doing that one. It kind of reminds me. Oh, kind of. It's I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the the roll up bag where I hacked it and did a zip. Uh, who's that by? Swoon. The roll-up one. Atlas rucksack, that one. Kind of reminds me of a rucksack, but it's got a zip in the top with more hardware and some vinyl. And I'm definitely doing the studs. So i got to do that too. My pattern list is not getting any smaller. Let me put it that way. And I also try not to necessarily do what the other pattern designers do, because you can watch them do it. That's where I'm at. Hi, Mickey. We are making a wench wallet. I nearly finished this one, but I've got more going on here. I'm just going to keep sewing all day. I've got to go. Hubby wants to go to services. Bye. I will see you later. I'm sure. For those of you that don't have Facebook, can I suggest just making a profile just for your sewing groups? so much fun in my sewing group. The people in it are awesome. They're super helpful, super friendly, super polite. I have nothing bad to say. I think I've only had, I've only ever kicked out three people from my group ever. And that's because they broke the rules. Two people were spamming. And one person was just coming, dumping their test posts and leaving. And I warned them that they didn't let do that. So I've only ever kicked out three people. Alright. I no longer give warning. I just, I don't even mention it now, usually. I just... The latest one I did was like yesterday or the day before. I don't love test posts and I love that you guys share what you make. But you also have to be present in my group. That is my only rule. 
comment on stuff, join in. It's the whole point. All right. Now the turn through. The turn through takes the longest because you've got to be gentle. I just set up a new Facebook for my sewing. See, that's a great idea. There's so many awesome groups. I know Sia Swag's got a group. Um, so Whatever's got a group. And then all the pattern people have their own groups as well. Um, and some of them are like me, where they're happy for you to post other things that you've made from other pattern designers as well. My group is a bit of a free-for-all. Anything you've sewn is allowed to be seen. Clothing, quilts, teddies, bags, any brand, any make. Whatever's going. Designed it yourself? That's fine too. I am literally cool with whatever. Make sure you answer the questions um, because my, my people don't let you in unless you answer the questions. Basically is what do you like to sew and will you follow the rules? And that makes you consciously aware of the rules and that will be why you ever get kicked out if you break them. Yes, yeah, sweet. As I expected, it's supposed to be working to a training module. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm distracting you. But it's so pretty. It's like iridescent rainbowy. I do like this vinyl. I have no regrets that I purchased this. I've still got all those other ones where I bought like 30 centimeters. I'm kind of hoping I can get a wallet and a floozy out of them so I can have some sets. Um, and I'd like to halve my personal stash of vinyl before the end of the year. That's, that's my mission. Um, I'm also going to do another de-stash of all my fabrics. It needs to happen. Um, but I'm thinking I might do it through my website so that if you're overseas and you want to purchase it, it works out the shipping for you. So we don't have to do the back and forth. Um, so I might set up a D stash on my website next month. Yes, Anetta, and sharing all your sewing projects. So I like if I make a new thing for my room and I think that you guys will benefit from it, I'll put up a photo. Like my um I made it myself. I was very proud. I didn't even ask Hobby. I made a interfacing holder above my ironing board table so I can just pull it out, iron, and then roll it up when I'm finished. I was quite proud of that. He's like, who built that? I'm like, me. He wasn't mad about it. He was just shocked that it had happened. All right. I think we're good. This is a flute cleaner. For anybody that's never been here before, hi, I'm insane and I repurpose things. This is a flute cleaner made of wood. It is my turning stick. It is wonderful and I love it. I'm actually getting back into sewing, so I'm really newbie. That's good. Come join my group because all the people in there will help you. Like, they answer questions and stuff. I don't, I usually um, get beaten to it now. Everyone loves being helpful, and I love that they love being helpful. That's why I love my group. I'm more active in my group than I am on actual Facebook. I don't really do Facebook. I have it so I can have my group. Hi, Christine. I'm glad I'm keeping you entertained while you're off to get better. I made you chuckle. Why did I make you chuckle? What did I do? <laughs> All right. Second last stitch. We we'll go around the edge and then we sew it in half and we're done. Needle down, pivot. You 
You said your channel was insane. I am insane. <gasps> Run out of bobbin thread. Damn it. So close. My channel is insane. I've got everything from sewing to laminating to doing a cheat signing to painting a sewing machine green. Nobody in their right mind would paint a sewing machine, but I'll tell you what, I regret nothing. I love that it's green. It makes me so happy sitting here and it's not grey. You don't, you, if you've never changed your sewing machine, you, you don't get it. All I used to do was sit here and stare at grey and grey. Now, this is like metallic -y in the right light. And my sewing machine is bright green. Like, and metallic. It's metallic apple green. Like, it's just, it's cool. It is industrial. It's a second or third hand one of, um, like, buy, swap, and sell on Facebook. I don't know how old it is. I don't care. It's still going. One day, if I'm rich and famous, I will buy one that has a thread cutter and give this away. I've already decided that if I ever get a new machine, I will give this one away and I'll do like a competition. Um, but so far, it's it's fine. It does what I need. You should do it. You should spray your dookie. So, all you need to know, right, it's not that difficult. Make sure that you put a primer. That's step one. Actually, that's not step one. Step one is take a photo of how and where everything sits and then unscrew all the chrome bits. That's, that's two steps. That's step one and step two. Then you make sure you prime it and then just pick a colour and go nuts. That's literally it. Take a photo so that you remember where all the little bits are and then as you take them off, put them into individual Ziploc bags so you know that that screw goes with that piece. Uh, and then it's really, really easy. You just unscrew the metal bits, tape up anything you can't unscrew that you don't want painted, and then prime it and paint it. See, that's cool too. You could also... Um, you could hand paint it if you didn't want to, like, spray paint it. Or you could do what that lady did and cover it in stickers and cool stuff. So many cool options if you're too scared to pull it apart. I kind of still want to find someone that's a really cool graffiti artist and get them to graffiti it with like a sharpie and then seal it and they could draw like funky cool stuff i'm not that creative i'm not i'm creative with fabric i can't draw so i can't do that but it would be so cool to get someone to graffiti my machine it's like life dreams yeah see thread cutter that's the only thing i feel like i'm missing out on is a thread cutter but I also got this pretty cheap. I got this machine for 500 bucks, which, let's be honest, is cheaper than some of the normal domestic machines. And so far I've had it for... Four, five years? Four or five years. And it's only ever needed one service. Uh, and if you're in Townsville, you take your machine to sewing trade because Josh is amazing. Right. Because I taped up the bits that had issues. So anywhere that I thought looked like it would get in. So this plate, I didn't, I don't think I took it off. I think I just covered it in masking tape. So the like the, so it didn't get in there, but I still got spray paint everywhere around it. 
Okay, so I've had it at least five years. It's had one service. Um, because I do that every time I do a bob and I oil it. Except today, because again, I was sidetracked chatting. Uh, love the Triviani, just make three. It's a really cute bag, and I love the, the clever end design. I thought that was really cool. Lots of people have really cool patterns, actually. I've got, I've still got 108 patterns or something I need to do videos for. So once I've done a video, I put it in a separate folder so that I can see that it's done, and then I move on to another one. Unless it's, you know, for an order, or at the moment, I'll mainly be doing lives of my own patterns, just because I need to get them all made for the market. And I'm probably going to do a bunch of swoon Dallas duffels on my cylinder arm, because that puts that edging on for me, so I don't have to pin it, it will just sew it on. Which is like the coolest contraption. And you can get them for this machine because I have one. I don't know where it is. I know I bring it out and show you guys like every live video. I have a thing. So you can put in a flat piece of fabric and it will double fold it and then sew it on the edge. And it's like you got to add it to a bunch of screws and stuff. But it is very cool. One, two, over, done. Yeah, cool. Oh. There's a lot of really nice patterns, and there's a lot of really cool pattern designers. I try and spread out, I try and spread the love so that I can show off a lot of different people. I don't get paid for doing different pattern designers. I'm not one that goes, you must pay me to do it. I just like doing it. I like to show off different styles of bags because some people have like a very distinct style. Uh, I can look at a pattern and go, oh, it was that designer because it looks like their, their aesthetic, I guess. Which is not a bad thing. They look awesome. But I can, I can tell. Apparently my brain's in tune with that. Whereas I don't think you can tell my patterns because they're a little bit all over the shop, which I love. Keep you guessing. <laughs> Good night, Linda. So this, my bench is actually wrapped in like car vinyl wrap I bought on eBay. Because you can get all like kind of funky colours. I did kind of want to do like a, a carbon fibre look, but I thought it would be too much on camera. It would have been very cool. And I might still do it one day. You never know. I might get sick of this pearly colour. Or it might just get damaged. So I'll take it off and change it up. It's amazing how the wallet looks small. Yes. Well, that's because we fold it in half in seam allowances. But it does actually... Well, maybe this one doesn't. If you put stuff in it, it will stand up by itself. That is a thing. I know it's a thing. Mine stands up by itself. When I take photos, I usually stand them up in the booth. This one doesn't want to. Uh, but it could just be because this is a thinner vinyl. Uh, but it's got a slip pocket on the back. Now, depending on your phone, it may or may not fit. I can't promise that. It depends on what your phone is. If your phone's on the smaller side, it will definitely fit in that back slip pocket. And there's a little bit of a gap here, right? So you need... The gap is... So that you can put your phone in the back without damaging here. I have a clutch motor. Some of my first videos, I still... No, I had a clutch motor. Uh, and you can hear it and it's like a constant whirring. So I eventually upgraded and I now have a servo motor. So it's silent. And that I mainly just got it. It wasn't bothering me until I started doing videos. And then the noise annoys me. But before that, it didn't bother me. It's only because I was doing videos and I wanted to make sure that you guys could hear me. The green foot. I, I painted the machine. The foot's just, it's actually white. It's just a Teflon foot.
See, this one's rad. Um, oh yeah, so the green foot was my old Teflon foot. I sewed through it and smashed it. Apparently it was just done being my foot. It didn't want to play the game anymore. So it broke and died. And so then I got I got a clear one that was clear plastic and they said that that was great for like a Teflon alternative and I used it for half a day and it's shattered. So that's don't get plastic feet, like the clear plastic, it's useless. And so now I'm on this one. Now I don't love this one either. I think that's too wobbly side to side for me personally. Uh, but it's the only one I've got. I need to look into getting like a higher quality one than the $4 one that's on there. I will get onto that, but not today. I also just purchased 20 bobbins for my other machine. So let me just show you this, because this is cool. I ordered them yesterday and they expressed them to me. These are the bobbins for the uh, cylinder arm. Wow, they charged me $15 the poster. That's insane. So these are the bobbins that we're using on the industrial. Here is a bobbin that is for the domestic. So the industrials are thinner. Actually, it's just smaller. Right, so the in this is the industrial. This is for my brother. I just want to show you this because this, this amuses me. This one is shorter. Then you have this monster. This one is an inch wide. I had to measure it. So this is what I'm currently using. And that is the one for the cylinder arm. Look at the difference. That is insanely huge. Um, but I needed different bobbins because I wasn't unwinding and rewinding for every video. So I went and bought 20. So I now have enough for all the colors. And I will get a full everything out of that size bobbin. It fits like almost twice as much, I reckon. They're insane. They're huge. They were $2 each. So I spent like $55 to get them delivered. But we do these things because I will ultimately save thread by not having to unwind it all the time. They are huge. One full inch. But it's cool. I wish domestics had bobbins that big. So, okay, I heard of a guy in Euroa, and he won't do it for anyone, but it can be done. If you know an engineer, there is an engineer guy in Euroa that on his machine like this, he has set it up so that you just put a full cone in the bobbin. I don't know how he did it. It's obviously, like, rigged up to go through stuff. But he now, he so he buys his colours in pairs, and he puts one on the top and he puts a whole spool under the machine into the bobbin. I'm very jealous. If I ever find someone that can do that, it is happening. So he's rigged his bobbin to be a whole spool. But it's not, it's not like, so my, this machine behind me is my industrial overlocker. It can do like a, a fancy I think it's like a lock stitch or a loop stitch. So it will sew and overlock at the same time. But the stitches aren't as strong because of the way that it works. Whereas the guy that rigged his machine, it works the same. But you just don't have to wind bobbins. I am insanely jealous. And I want one. But then you'd also have to remember to constantly oil your machine bobbin case, I imagine. Because it wouldn't do it by itself. It is super insanely smart. I imagine it's quite difficult. So the lady at Vardman Threads was telling me, um, and she asked him to do it to her machine, and he said no. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, it's my thing. Um, she was going to pay him and everything. He's just, he doesn't want to do it for other people. It's his own thing, which is kind of fair enough, but don't tell people how cool it is if you don't want to offer to help him with it. Anyway, one day I'm going to meet an engineer and they are going to do it for me. So, if your partner's an engineer, get them to look into it. And then tell me how to do it and I will do a video on doing it myself and I'll convert it and it'll be great. Bye, Laurie. I'm probably going to...
gonna stop the video soon. We've been here for two hours. I'm just gonna keep sewing. This is my day. And when I stop sewing, I'm gonna go actually do the uh, water bottle holder. Because I imagine it's the free pattern when I hit 10,000 followers. But there's only like 300 left. So I really need to get it designed into the testers. But I also really want to make this wallet. I'm kind of torn. He could patent the idea. I know he could. I don't know why sewing machine people haven't come up with it. Unless they just want to sell us all more bobbins. Surely it would make more sense though. To have it. Rig up a whole bobbin underneath. That would be amazing. I could take the bobbin winder off my machine if that were the case. It's all right, I'm not leaving yet. I haven't given up yet. When my body feels ready to go design the pattern, I will go do it. Uh, but right now I'm really enjoying doing card slots. I get into like a groove. And I can see like half of you have dropped off. You've watched me do stuff and they've all gone, but that's okay too. Do you have trouble with using the tape? I do not. Uh, the official answer is buy the low tack stuff. So at Spotlight specifically, they have extra tacky and normal, just buy the normal one. Uh, but I've never snapped a needle because of tape. I usually only snap needles because I'm trying to push this thing to its limits and sew very thick layers, which is not what it's for. Some leave, some of us show up late. That's true. That's all right, I'm not gonna leave just yet. But to be fair, you have watched me make a whole one live. So I get it. It's cool. When I get down to like 30 people watching, I might jump off. But we're still at about 90, so that's cool. We were up to 110 just before. It does like a tally count thing for me. Besides, I need to make strumpets to take to the market. So technically I'm still doing market stuff. I also still have a Pickle Rick strumpet I need to do. Really need to get onto all these things. I need to empty the drawers out. They're full of um, clothing. I cut out the pink dress as you saw on a video. I really want to make it. But before I make it, I've got one more black top to make with the overlock I set up as black, which is why I need to do that next. Um, but it's not a high priority because I need to make stock. <laughs> How long have I been selling bags? Ooh, three, four, four years, probably. I started off selling aprons. That's where I started. I was doing retro 50 circle skirt aprons. Um, but there's only so many aprons someone can buy from you. One for themselves, one for their mom, one for their friend, and then you're kind of done. So I sold hundreds of aprons in Townsville. And then, I don't know, it kind of dried up, I guess. That's before I had like a website and stuff. So then I switched, I made myself a handbag one day and everybody wanted one and then that snowballed. And then I, during COVID, I got into doing videos. So I only started doing videos because all my sales dropped off with COVID and I was bored and wanted to sew. And I'm like, there's only so much kind of stock I need to make. So instead I'm like, how about I record myself making this stock? And then that snowballed into, I now make my own pattern. Because uh, I, I quite enjoy, I get really excited when one of you posts that you made my pattern. I know it's ridiculous. 
every single time someone's made my pattern, I do like a little out loud to myself because I'm insane. I've inspired someone to do something either for themselves or a friend and it's made them happy and it makes me happy making you happy. Uh, so the patterns are probably not going to stop anytime soon. Uh, what are all those card slots going into? So I'm making the loops. So all the card slots that I cut, I am now making pink waterproof canvas pockets essentially so they're just like folded over pockets and each pocket will hold a card what's next for me in what designing or sewing because i need to make i need i want to take 20 whippersnappers with me and i've only got nine more to make so i've made 11 I want to take 10 of these wallets. So today I've got another one, and then yesterday I had another one. Um, I've got a list on my board. And the water bottle holder I'm about to design for you all, I want to take 20. So I'm going to take 10 large ones and 10 small ones. So what's next for me today specifically is I want to go and finish writing that pattern. Um, this week I'd like to have, you know more stock to take to said market i will still put it on my website to sell to whoever but you know the name of the game is i'm paying money to do the market i want to have stock to make money while i'm at the market it's not even a market it's like a show jumping championship which is why it's all a lot of my stuff lately is horsey themed because i'm taking it with me if it doesn't sell um yeah, I get withdrawal when you don't do something live. I'm happy to do lives, but just know for the next few months there's going to be a lot of repeats. Like yesterday, my pattern, well, Monday my pattern released. Yesterday I did the video. Today I'm doing a live of the same thing um, because I need to get made what I need to get made. That's pretty much all there is to it. I have a deadline and stuff. Bye. Thank you for joining. So I'm happy to do lives every Wednesday, but please know that it's always going to be repeats. I don't do new things in lives because I do the videos to teach you stuff and the live is just so you can chat to me. There's less teaching in a live. It's more just watching and chatting. Whereas You'll notice in my other videos that aren't live, I don't do a lot of chatting about stuff. Like I do a little bit, but not a lot. Not as much as I've done today. Even though technically I'm sitting here talking out loud to myself like a crazy person. I try to, any trick that I come up with, I promise I'm not hoarding it in my brain. I just, I don't necessarily always remember to tell you every tip and trick that I've ever come up with in every single video because my brain's not that good. I don't want a storefront. A storefront means less, more overheads and less time to do stuff. So what I will be eventually doing, my, mine and my husband's dream goal, buy a house. I will either have a granny flat or I will have, like, we'll buy a really big house and a quarter of it will be for sewing. And I will have all my stock set up so that people that come over for workshops can come in and then purchase. But I don't want to go, like, on a main street and have a shop. That, that to me, is not at all where my dream goals are at. I would spend all of my time um, in the shop. There'd be no videos. I'd have no time to, like, design or anything because I'd constantly be with customers. So as much as I love customers, online I can kind of just pack it whenever I want. So I don't want a storefront. I do want a workshop space that's permanently set up and eventually I would like to have 
like eight industrial machines so that you come to the workshop, there is a machine waiting for you, and you can come and do cool stuff. That is where I would prefer to be in the teaching aspect of everything. And I'd like to have industrial machines so that you guys can all have a go if you don't own one or whatever. So that's, that's my life goal. But I'd like to own the property it's all sitting on so that I can decorate it and paint it and do crazy things. My free time for looking at what my husband is doing. He has no short-term memory. Aww. Um, basically we'll buy a house if the perfect house pops up. So I randomly look online we want, we want about 10 to, about ten acres because we've got the horses and stuff. And I don't want the shed too close to the house so I don't have to hear the forging and the banging. Um, and I want a granny flat or like a she shed to have the sewing stuff in so that the business will have its own separate space. Because at the moment, I can see my bedroom door from where I sit. I would prefer to have it in like a corner of a house. So every now and then I jump online and see if there's any house that kind of tickles our fancy. And then when we find our house, then I will settle and hubby will still move. And we will just go visit him lots. And it will be fine. By then I would have made friends who can watch my dog for the weekend. Because Knuckles is cool. Auntie Knuckles. He's sitting behind my chair on the floor. Yes, exactly. An education center at home. Uh, but I'd like to have industrial machines set up so that you guys don't have to bring your machine. You just kind of show up. And because I understand that a lot of you don't want to buy a machine that you don't know if you want. And I completely get that. So it would also be come and trial an industrial. See if you like it. See if it's for you. See if it's too intimidating and you hate it. Like It's like a try before you buy to learn to make cool stuff and then once I've got my education center I will do clothing as well as bags and stuff like and I can have a regular a regular weekly sewing class or something and then my studio will be set up at the back or whatever and then there'll be a room for like shipping and supplies and that's the goal it's in my head. I'll get there one day. I would love the hat for the bobbin. If anybody comes across it, please, like, scream it in my face. I wouldn't care if I had to pay someone to set it up. To have no bobbin would be amazing. <laughs> For selfish reasons, I hope you find your 10 acres in Victoria. Amanda, are you coming to the workshop that I'm already doing? Do you know about the workshop I'm already doing? Uh, probably not. He probably wouldn't finish in the army. Depends on how old we are when we find our dream house, I guess. Have you ever thought about talking to machine manufacturer about doing a collab and designing a dream machine? I don't know what my dream machine would be. Green? Coming in colour options would be step one. Um, thread cutter? And I don't know, beyond that. I'm, I'm not really into machines. And I know that sounds so ridiculous because, you know, I'm into the fact that I painted it green, but I'm not into like a specific brand or whatever. The perks, like thread cutter and bobbin spool thing would probably be all my specifications that I've got going on. I don't, I don't really care about the other stuff. Maybe, maybe a zigzag, but I don't really ever see me using it. Not for a bag anyway. 
unless I was like flat laying leather and wanted to zigzag them together. That's the only time I could see me using that. I feel like the colour or like a cool pattern on it would be more my dream machine with a thread cutter. And you can already get that. I don't know, maybe it comes with a magnet and stuff to hang stuff on it because that's convenient and it comes with a cool light maybe? But different people like their lights in different spots. I know most people have it from the back coming forward but if I'm leaning down and it gets in my eyes, I don't like that. So I've got my light under here. So this is like a magnetic, I don't know, it's, for a, like, it's like working on cars or whatever, so it's magnetic, right? And then... You just turn it on and it's got different settings. It's got a flashing setting, which I don't know why anybody would want, but whatever. I just put that all in the wrong spot. Um, so the workshop is live on my website. So you can actually go and sign up. It's at the end of June. Uh, there's only going to be ever eight spots in any workshop I ever do because I like people to be able to have time with me. Like you're coming to ask me questions and learn stuff from me. So I don't want like a class of 20. It'll only ever be a class of eight because I find eight comfortable. Um, but the workshop is up and ready and you can after pay it and all that kind of jazz. I run everything through my website because I have after pay and I understand that after pay is helpful to people. I get it. $120 is a lot of money. But you will get all the supplies to make said bag in that $120. And I'm probably going to cut half the pieces out for you. I've been thinking about that. I won't cut the waterproof canvas in case you want to bring your own lining, but I will be cutting all the vinyl pieces for you so you don't have to do that because I don't want you to spend most of your time at my workshop cutting, because that's not cool. Uh, that person should get a pattern and work with companies. He should definitely get that. Helen's coming to the workshop, and then one lady ordered two spots. So I imagine that's for her and her friend, which is cool. You can buy it for your friend or however you want to do it. I have no objection. I just need to know what you guys want. Does it include the flight? Unfortunately, no. Depending on where you live, though, like Brisbane to Melbourne, flights are only 65 bucks. <laughs> Could I come and be the maid? I even bought a new kettle for this occasion. So we've got a kettle. I don't drink tea and coffee. So those kinds of things aren't really my thing. But I have gone and bought it all. I went and got uh, new chairs for my dining kitchen that's like super sturdy. Because I just, I didn't trust my other ones. They were a bit crap. So I've bought new chairs. I've bought, we've got soap dispensers. I've gone and got all like that stuff. And I am just filling the swag bags with stuff as I think of it. So there's badges, there's magnets, there's stickers. I'm probably going to do a HTV for your shirt so you can stick it on a shirt. Like I'm going a little bit overboard, but that's just who I am. It's fine. Oh, yeah, the flashing to like alert people. That's clever. Although it doesn't last terribly long, so I don't know how long you'd be alerting people for. I get three hours of sewing on the low setting. So I've actually got two of these. So one charges while I'm using one. And then when this one dies, I'll plug it in and grab the other one. And I know that sounds ridiculous. But because I sew all day, I need more than three hours worth of light. It's just how that works. But yeah, so the... I. Here's the thing, if you're not on Facebook, you probably didn't know I made the workshop live because I forgot to do a video on it. It's just occurred to me now how there's no video about, hey, come do a workshop. So that's my bad. And I understand that it's not for everyone. I just thought it'd be like a fun social thing and we can make stuff. And Flutie's awesome. 
I wish I could attend the workshop. Could you do something similar over Zoom? I am going to look into that. We're going to do a free Zoom workshop till I work out how it works. Because I don't really know how a Zoom works. Um, and then we can do a sew along together or a workshop over Zoom. I would love to do that. I just don't know about it. So I will have to do one. We'll do one. We'll do a quick one. We'll do a free pouchal Zoom. I will work on that. You can come join the Zoom and we will do pouchals because it's a free pattern and it's quick and so I can suss out what it is I need because I don't know. I'm very excited for my workshop because it, I get to teach in person with you guys, meet you. I get to like put a face to all the names I see. Because again, I'm ridiculous. That's fine. Ha! Look at that. We did two lots of card slots. Woo! Well, okay. It doesn't cost heaps because I'm having it at my house. So there's no overhead to hire the space. I've got all the stuff in my house already. So I don't have to go out and get extra stuff. Basically, I am charging you for the supplies, and I think I worked it out as like, I don't know, and like a little bit for my time. So I worked out how much other people charge, and then I charge less, because it's fine. Uh, and then the swag bag's going to have like a whole bunch of stuff in it anyway that would cost money that you're not paying for, because I'm just doing it for fun. So that's kind of how I worked it out. I had somebody help me. I've been back and forthing with a lady and she's like, you need to remember this and this and this and this. So I had a list of all the things I had to get and do and I have done all that, which is why it is now live. And the only thing I will need to do right before is go and buy milk and biscuits. And that's it. I've got everything else. Doesn't it worry you you have strangers in your home? No, because I live on base. So if you, if I don't let you in, you can't actually get to my house. Um, I live on an army base. So I, we will meet in the car park out the front of the army base and I have to sign you all in uh, and then escort you back out. So we, we just follow each other. Um, so I'm not worried if you know where I live because you can't get to my house. It's just not a thing. So I'm not worried. I'm on an army base. It'd be no different to me having a shop front, really. You'd know where I was at all times. I'd be in the store. So if you're going to do something horrible, you know where to find me. Wouldn't be that much different, really, I don't think. So it's five hours. So it goes from 10 till 3. Is that five hours? 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so it's 10 till 3 on a Saturday. I didn't make it too early so that if you are driving up from wherever, you don't have to get up at 4 a.m. Um, and 3 o'clock means you could still pop into town if you wanted to do some sightseeing on the way home. Um, it may not take you five hours to sew it. I've just allowed that much time and then we can, you know, whatever. I don't really know. If we all finish early, I don't know. I didn't run, so when I was in Townsville, I actually ran all the demos at Spotlight. They used to just give me free range to do whatever. I did Sweet Pea, the messenger, like the little messenger bag from Blue Color. I did that as a tutorial, like demo at Spotlight. So I used to have people come and sit and chat much like this, but they were just in front of me while I'm sewing and teaching stuff. And I loved it. It was great. Um, and I also have two backup machines. So if somebody gets here and goes, oh, my God, I forgot my machine, I have two domestic machines here that we could use. Just FYI. Bye, Christine. You can't get through the gate. There's, like, a big boom gate and there's constantly people there. And there is military police on base. It's all 
I don't know. For some, it might be intimidating. I like it. I don't have to worry about anything. Everything's sorted. Oh, I just run out of battery on my phone. Apparently, I plugged, didn't plug it in properly. So I'm going to have to end the meeting here. I am down to 4% battery, which is unfortunate. Um, so I will, if you want to come chat to me, switch to Facebook. Uh, I have to go and plug in my phone properly and stuff. And I'm just going to keep doing these. Actually, you know what? I might stop and go and design this uh, thingy. So thank you all for joining me. But I have run out of battery on my phone. So I have to go. I'm very, very sorry. I thought I plugged it in. It turns out I didn't. Um, but thank you all for watching. And yeah, come make a wench wallet. <laughs>